inside of the people. Uh, so the fungal, the fungal cell itself, not the long strand form, but the yeast cell, is very, very similar to a human cell, much smaller. But um, uh, so what they think they're looking at as human cells, it's actually fungal cells. Another kind of close-up picture of the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but you see this mass, this mass, and this mass, all these cells, all these, and these are individual cells connected, these filamentous forms. They're, they're secreting enzymes. They're continuing to do what they need to do to spread in the environment. If we look in the environment, what do fungal cells, I mean, fungus uh, occupies a lot of different niches in the environment, but especially the floor of a jungle where everything falls to the floor of the jungle and the fungus cell is there to decompose it, to break it down. So it secretes all these different types of enzymes. And fungus is ubiquitous, it's everywhere in the environment. So all the plants around this have antifungal properties. There's, um, there's hundreds and thousands of years of scientific research to still discover all the antifungal substances in nature. But uh, what we're seeing are just um, some of the reasons why it, it's so effective. It spreads in a form that literally can take over a plant, suffocate it, and this is really in one essence what it does to the body. Um, I think we have some more pictures. Uh, some of these are, I think, animations. Uh, this is just a pretty picture. It shows the uh, yeast cell converting to, uh, going through the budding process, how substances with inside the yeast cell are starting to enter the bud, and that'll duplicate. Uh, Candida can reproduce asexually. It doesn't need another yeast cell to reproduce. It can just reproduce on its own. It just needs the nutrients, and it gets that um, from the environment it's in. One of the main nutrients that uh, candida needs are fatty acids, and it gets those from our body. It needs uh, different fuel sources. It, um, sugars are one fuel source, um, different amino acids, etc. But it needs these things to run the inner machinery of the cell, and it gets these from our, our environment which is one of the ways our product Candida Force is very effective, is that we provide it with a fatty acid which affects the inner machinery and doesn't allow it to produce the cell wall membrane it needs to produce and can also affect the pH inside the cell. Here's uh, another um, nice pretty picture of something which is sometimes very deadly and lethal in the body. Um, the next picture is going to show us uh, sort of the, anim or the nice animation of what we saw earlier of uh, a white blood cell consuming multiple yeast cells. Uh, here's a nice graph you'll find on a lot of different uh, websites. You'll see the budding process at the top where the yeast is budding, con creating two yeast cells and how that process continues. Uh, then you'll see in the middle you'll see uh, the yeast cell creating the pseudohyphal cells and how they start to branch off and create more uh, spores and pseudohyphal cells. And then um, in each of these, you're seeing the microscopic view to the right. And then on the bottom, you're seeing the creation of the hyphal form and the branching that takes place. That's a nice diagram you'll find on uh, several different sites. Um, another diagram that shows a little bit more about the inner machinery just through a TD, uh, 2D image and kind of the branching that takes place at the bottom. That looks like cactus. Uh, this uh, is showing you kind of the cell wall membrane and what you're going to see a lot of different uh, components. You'll see that there are sugars in the cell wall membrane. But if you look at the very bottom, what you're looking at is, is a, a phospholipid bilayer. Uh, there's a row of cells on the bottom and top and they have a little space in between them. And those are phospholipids and they have channels in there and they also are incorporating other components of either sugars or protein. But you'll see um, the layer underneath that has a lot of what are called mannoprotein glucans, beta-1,3, beta-1,6 glucans, which are sugars. Mannoproteins are sugar protein combinations. Uh, chitin, another sugar, these, that makes up really a lot of the, the stiffness or backbone of the cell wall membrane. But Candida has an amazing ability to shift these components. So if a white, the way our body would identify a, a fungal cell is through what shows up uh, on the surface. Um, by digesting it and, and putting these pieces up on the cell surface of the white blood cell, the body knows exactly what to go after. But candida can shift that instantaneously. It can, uh, or almost instantaneously, it can create a shift and then it can change the outer membrane so the, the white blood cells no longer recognize it. It's an amazing process. Also one of the things that um, as commonly happens with uh, a lot of infectious agents, with uh, a lot of fungus and with candida, is it'll form what's called a biofilm around it. And a biofilm many times will be it's kind of like a mucousy layer so that um, the body doesn't, can't identify the, the fungus once again. Many times these biofilms are made of other bacteria. 
recent uh, research shows that one of the, the common bacteria, which forms a biofilm around the candida and concealing it from the body, is E. coli, which has undergone the same shift because of how we've changed the internal environment of the intestinal tract through antibiotics or through steroids or other drugs or um, uh, sometimes even stress and how we affect the immune system, but primarily through antibiotics. Um, this next picture <coughs> is a good picture, another, uh, I think, animated piece here. Um, it's going to show a white blood cell, and this kind of gives you an idea, or you can see all these little projections uh, sticking out of the white blood cell. And these are receptors, and receptors um, are commonly, you'll find these on all cells, but one of the ways that candida affects uh, white blood cells in the body is it secretes these enzymes, these secreted aspartyl proteinases, and they cleave or they chop off or cut off these receptors. Why are these receptors important? Um, uh, for human cells, we have receptors that allow insulin to bind to the human cell, and then by binding, it increases the, in the uptake of sugar inside the cell. So this, it's kind of a lock and key mechanism. The insulin comes along, uh, it's the key, opens the door, sugar goes into our cells. When that doesn't happen, we have blood sugar imbalances, and that can lead to diabetes. Also with immune cells, when it chops off these receptors, uh, white blood cells travel through the immune system once they've, they've been produced by the blood cell, uh, the bone marrow activated, activated by different tissues or activated within the tissues, and then they'll travel through the bloodstream, and these receptors will latch on to the wall of, of the arteries or veins, and there's a reaction that takes place between the receptor and the wall, which allows the cells of the wall to separate to allow the white blood cell to leave the bloodstream and enter the tissue where there's an infection. Well, candida has recognized this ability of white blood cells, so it secretes enzymes which specifically destroy what are called uh, CD11 and CD18 receptor sites on the surface membrane of the white blood cell, and this causes immunosuppression. And also what they found in research, and uh, there's one research that identified all these three components, was that uh, these enzymes um, also cause hypertension, high blood pressure. So that was research that was done at the University of California, San Diego by uh, Frank Delano and his researchers, and also um, by other research that we have, uh, and it's called, um, let's see. It also has to do with the, the ability of uh, candida to resist and, and adapt and change the fungal, um, antifungal drugs, which are it's constantly being assaulted with. So I think that was the end of our pictures. Okay, great. So uh, again, those are, will be on our candida library. You'll be able to go to see those. You'll be able to see the, the videos and this whole um, uh, webcast on McCombsplan.com in the future on the candida library on ex uh, candida expert and um, on our different uh, blogs that we have out there. Uh, so I want to get back to the effect of antibiotics in the body. Uh, we had left off where antibiotics suppress macrophages which inhibit fungal candida. Again, macrophages were the primary line of defense by the immune system, and candida has repeatedly shown an incredible ability to uh, suppress, manipulate, and destroy macrophages. Uh, antibiotics suppress cytokines that recruit neutrophils which inhibit fungal candida. Again, uh, what I believe I mentioned is macrophages, these white blood cells, are one of the primary um, producers of cytokines that are carried through the tissues of the bloodstream to recruit neutrophils to come along to the site of the infection. And when you take an antibiotic and you suppress the function, you suppress these cytokines by suppressing the white blood cell, you now have really suppressed the ability of the body, the body's main defense against candida, to eliminate it. So it's uh, macrophages have been found to be ineffective. Antibiotics are now suppressing the main effective cell that can come and actually play a role. Um, it's not that it gets rid of all of them, but it does have a suppressive effect, so it's another factor that plays into the conversion of yeast to the fungal form. Um, and antibiotics suppress cytokines that sequester or hide iron away from candida and other microorganisms that require iron to grow and spread. So some of these uh, uh, cytokines which come along later on, and again, these come along at different hours or even days into an infectious process. Some of these will bind iron so that the microorganism doesn't have it available to grow. So without the iron, it really in inhibits or impedes the growth of candida. Um, antibiotics destroy bacteria that synthesize B vitamins, a very important part. 
um, a lot of the good bacteria or a lot 